On IMDb, Olivia Chell calls Cape Fear greasy. Who in their right mind would watch a legendary film like Cape Fear and think, oh yeah, I like this film. I'm doing nothing this Wednesday. Let's remake this mother. No, no, no. No, when you watch the original, what really slaps you in the mouth and spits in your eye is, of course, Mitchum's terrifying performance. He sleazes through the movie with such confidence and threat, a legend. Now, I'm all about De Niro, but Christ, he isn't suited to this role at all. His accent is hilarious, his hair is greasy, and his attitude too scowly to be taken seriously. The remake, in particular the final scene on the boat, lacks the subtlety and menace that the original held. De Niro's mental yelling and hollering no match for Mitchum's silent smile. I think by trying to make the new version as graphic as possible, it became a bit ridiculous and I was more inclined to laugh than hide behind the sofa. I can't condemn anyone for liking the new version, especially if they haven't seen the original. But come on, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. One star. I like that they thought De Niro's hair was so greasy. That should be the title of their review. (laughs) Greasy. (laughs) Hello, hello, and welcome to the Roy Review Podcast. I'm Rob. And I'm Andy. And we're back this week to talk about 1991's Cape Fear for, oh boy, I'm so scared. I'm so scared I'm going to die, Ketober. Boy, am I so spooked that I might have dropped a duker in my jorts. Oh, Ober. <laughs> it also continues on Scores Timber. Wow. Yeah, a little bit. Isn't yeah. that cool? Isn't it just? Isn't that racial cool? Very cool. <laughs> Very good. Very, very good. Andy, how are you? I'm I'm all, I'm all right. I'm actually getting over a little bit of a throat thing that I had. You're the throat goat, right, baby? Mm. <laughs> don't, don't call me baby after calling me throat goat. <laughs> um yes, I am. But the Oh my god. Yeah, other than that, I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. How are you, Robert? I'm good. Did you just call me Robert? Yeah. I don't think you've ever called me Robert before. I don't think so either. Pretty weird. It is weird. It is. Um, well, I'm all thrown off. Uh, but I'm good. Have you ever seen Cape Fear before? I had. I had seen it. How about you? Only the Simpsons version. Yes. The uh, is that the second uh, Sideshow Bob episode or the third? I can't remember. Uh, uh, it's early. It's like the second or third. It's like the fourth or fifth yeah. season. Yeah. It's good stuff. But so I was watching this the whole time, just waiting for the rake. Yeah. <laughs> I just kept the waiting for De Niro. Scene where yeah. De Niro steps on a thousand rakes. <laughs> I just kept <laughs> waiting for it. I was like, what's going on? Yeah. No, that's good stuff. I like this a lot, actually. I like it a lot as well. I will say, I think it falls apart in the third act. I like the third act. Also, like, kind of literally falls apart in the third act. That boat is disintegrated to, like, a molecular level. (laughs) But I thought this was really good. But, Andy, can you answer a question for me? I do have a question for you right at the the start of the show. Is that crazy? Am I allowed to do that? Question. Nice. Nice. Yes, you are allowed to do that. Thanks. Yeah. What year did this movie come out? Uh, This came out the year of our Megazord, 1991. Ooh. I was also born this year. You were Bjorn that year? I was a baby Bjorn that year. Wow. Baby born, baby born. Nice. (laughs) Was this a big year for movies? This was for sure a big year for movies. Our famous segment. Previous episode, Terminator 2 Judgment Day came out. Check that shit out. Both the movie and the episode. Yes. The... Quietness of the goats. <laughs> the silence of the lambs. Oh, that's very good. I didn't even think Thank about you. that. Thanks. Ooh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, starring Kevin Costner. Wow, everybody's favorite. Yeah. Dragon Ball Z, Roly the Legendary Super Saiyan. 
Oh, it's one of those years, huh? I guess so. Well, they probably released like six of those movies. Yeah, I think they did like two or three a year. Yeah, then. wow. Yeah. They're not, they're, they're of course not canon, Robbie. They're not canon. They don't fit into the canon, Robbie. Okay, okay, man. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze. The Secret of My Ooze, Pineapple. Very good. <laughs> very, very good. Secret of My Ooze, Gonorrhea. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jifk came out. That's JFK, Robbie. What? Yeah, you, you darn fool. I guess Kevin Cost was pretty busy that year, huh? I guess so. Point Break. I've never seen it. It's uh, you ever see Fast and Furious? Other previous episode? Yes, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just that, but they're surfing. And they're okay. Thanks. Oh, Andy, a movie about your asshole, The Grand Canyon. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Very, very good. A movie about your asshole. Um, just give me a minute. Okay, yeah, take your time. Uh, shit. I should have found the movie first. Probably. Yeah. Dead Space. Because your ass is... There's a lack of blood flow to your ass. Oh, oh my. <laughs> it's I need a doctor it, right now. Yeah, it's dying and it's going to fall off. <laughs> the movie One Good Cop, which is just true about how many good cops there are in New York. Very good. But the, the Doors. Oh, with Val Kilmer as Jim Moore... Anderson. I, I was hoping that was going to be the same number of syllables, but I realized as I said it, it wasn't. Um, yes, that, that one. Wow. Yeah. There's a movie called Des- seen no, I've seen it a long time ago. It's pretty good. Yeah. Oliver Rock directed that. Oliver Stone. Right, yeah. All right. The movie December came out. You ever see the prequel to that? November? <laughs> very good. Very, very good, Robbie. Very good. All right, I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke, but I think it's too, I think it's too much. No, now you have to say it. It's in poor taste, and it's too much. Andy, okay. Andy is it's a, a movie. Pussy. It's a movie starring Jean Claude Van Damme. It's called Double Impact, and that's what me and my buddy do to your mom. I don't think it was too much. It's just it's it wasn't just, very good. Right, the delivery it's just not was worth off. It. it was too wordy. No, let's just judge it. I'm just going to judge your joke writing ability now. Yeah. Also, I, w- I would never. I would never. Yeah. yeah. Why are you saying my mom's ugly? Uh, I really, I really dug myself in the hole with this one, oh, Robbie. Oh man, there aren't that many movies that I recognize or movies I can make jokes about. Thelma and Louise came out. That's, you know, of note, I guess. It is. Oh, the last Boy Scout. I guess he's the last one because the rest of them are buried in your under your basement, huh, Andy? Yep. <laughs> uh, get ready for a lot of jokes like that for this episode. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, a movie about your mom came out called The Boneyard. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm so sorry. I mean, look, I started it. I started it. (laughs) And you finished it. And that's that's okay. (laughs) There's really nothing this year. It's not a very big year for movies. A movie about you, Afraid of the Dark? Uh, Yeah, okay. Yeah. But I guess if it was about you, it'd say people afterwards. Okay, okay. He got... uh, Yep, yep, he got it. (laughs) He's a rude dude. Dragon Ball Z, Cooler's Revenge. Like, you stole my cooler. (laughs) It's actually Frieza's non-canon brother. Frieza and Cooler? Yep. And they're, you know know what their dad's name is? is? 
Freezer. No, refrigerator. No, it's King Cold. All right. So in Dragon Ball, everybody's name is like a pun. Like literally everyone. Like all the Saiyans. Yeah, all the Saiyans are vegetables. Like Vegeta, vegetable. Kakarot, carrot. Uh, Nappa um, is a type of cat. Vegeta is not a vegetable. I've seen him moving in the series. Oh, good. Garsh, Robert. Um, the, uh, that's two. That's two. Raditz is radish. You know, it just keeps going. Okay. Yeah. Hook came out. Who? Hook. Oh, Hook. Looky, looky. I've got hooky. Wow. Hook is not as good as you remember. Uh, I agree with that. I saw it. I tried watching it a few years ago. I was like, this is pretty boring. Yeah, watched it like about a year ago. And I was like, this is not very good. <laughs> well, anyway, you know? Very good. Very, <laughs> very, very, very good. I made myself a nice smoothie this morning. I had a smoothie yeah. yesterday. You know what? You know what? Let me tell you a story about what happened oh, to me this morning. I can't wait. Okay. I know that this is, you know, irrelevant. But email in roysreview at gmail.com. If this has ever happened to you, we got a watermelon yesterday. Right? Like a big ass watermelon. Uh huh. I'm already scared about where this is going. Uh, email in if you ever got a watermelon. All right. What if, well, was, what if that was the whole story? <laughs> uh, I'd be disappointed that you wasted my time and the listeners. Yeah, yeah, no. So we got a watermelon. I set it on the chair. Uh, Because the table, we had all the other groceries on it. I set it on the chair. And then I just left it there. I was like, whatever. I'll cut that open tomorrow. So I wake up this morning, walk into the kitchen, and I see, like, liquid all over the floor. And I'm like, like, one of the cats knock over their water. And I was like, this is a lot of water. I look, their bowl is, like, full. Like, okay, nobody knocked over anything. And then I hear like a like a whistling. It's like, what the fuck is that? And I look, and the watermelon is like sputtering. It's like, <laughs> and like that's amazing. It's like foaming, like shit is coming out of this watermelon. And then I'm looking, and the trail of juice is coming from the watermelon. This thing like exploded overnight. Okay, let me ask you a question. How big was the hole in the watermelon? tiny like uh smaller than smaller than like a dime so here's the question i'm gonna ask to you okay Is it possible your cat spit into the watermelon no okay no is it possible that in your sleep you walked up to the watermelon and stuck a tiny little bomb inside of it that is possible i've i've been known to do that that's that's a problem in several ways andy andy ah, we need to name sleep. one well you know what? No, it's we live nowhere near each other, so you can't get to me. Yeah, do it. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I had to like throw. I like picked up the watermelon and like it felt like partially hollow. It was fucking gross. So uh, we didn't eat it, Rami. Waste of money. It was a waste of money because you know what? I looked up right after I looked up foaming watermelon, and the first thing that came up was like, yeah, don't eat that. And I was like, yeah, okay, duh. Oh, I would have eaten it just for the so fun I took of a, it. Took a big old bite. Uh oh. Uh oh. And then I shat out my skeleton. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's my story about my watermelon. Awesome story about your watermelon, dude. The Fisher yeah. King also came out in 1991. That's a good movie. Yeah. All right. So Cape Fear. Yeah, I like the opening. Oh, actually, before we get into Cape Fear, Peninsula Scare. Oh, like Cape. Okay, I see what yeah. you did. That's good. Archipelago Frighten. Okay. Um, jacket instead of a cape. Okay, instead okay, I like yeah. it. Jacket. Ah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Island Afraid. Very good. You already used Archipelago? Yeah. Damn. I said Archipelago Frighten. I have yeah. these written down. Damn. I haven't written any of down since uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Check that episode out as well. Very good. Key yeah. Terror. It's like a key. 
Okay. Like Florida Keys? Yeah. Nice. Eyelet Dread? Eyelet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These are deep cuts for Pretty... geological terms. <laughs> you, want, you want a deep cut? You ready? Home Panic? What's that? I don't even know what that is. The same thing as everything else I fucking said. Just oh, okay. <laughs> thing in a body of water. Who fucking knows? Who fucking okay. knows? Okay. Scarf fear instead of cape. Very good. Very yeah. good. I <laughs> could tell you didn't write that one down. Nope. <laughs> I didn't even think about the cape aspect of it other than bodies of water and land around to them. Okay. Okay. Inlet, inlet, I don't know, inlet anxiety. There you go. All right. I don't know. That's the episode, everybody. What a bad episode. (laughs) I really like the opening credits of the water and the text is distorted and everything. Yeah. And the score is, is very good. Yeah. Uh, I also love when they just show the eyeball in the water. It's very creepy, the opening. Yeah, this is a real spook fest of a movie. Uh, Gee, it's almost like it's... October. Very good. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, my first note is, wow, your boy is shredded. Yeah, yo, De Niro's looking good, baby. He's fucking 48. I know the hell he's looking great in this you don't look that good in the 90s when you're 48 uh, robbie d does yes you do jeez i'm crawdad <laughs> i love when he's getting out of prison and like what about your books he was already read them yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love de niro in this i think his accent is incredible it's I, so yeah. over the top i agree i think he's doing oh, counselor. a job yeah. That that weird lisp he does? A little bit, yeah. Did you forget about your restraining order counselor? <laughs> We're just two counselors working it out. Yeah, no, he's he's very good. You know who else is very, very good in this? Juliet Lewis. Juliet Lewis. She's awesome. Holy shit. That's the most convincing, like confused teenager I've ever seen. Well, she's only like 18 or 19 years old when they were filming yeah. this. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, she's also she in, was in the, so good. In the 90s, she was in like everything. Yeah. And rightfully so. Juliette Lewis is a great, great actress. Yeah. Uh, I also think uh, Nick Nolte and Jessica Lange, are, Jessica Lange are really good in this. I agree. I no, agree. I, I just think the standouts are Bobby D and uh, Julie Lou. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Very, very good. Uh, what what a time it must have been to just be able to light a cigar in a movie theater. Yeah. I don't even know if he was allowed. I just think everybody was just kind of scared of him. He you know? is the most obnoxious with that laugh. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, a genuinely imposing and terrifying person. Like, yes. We know De Niro can do scary because like you like taxi driver is a spook it's kind of a spook fest in that like and in this you know you know it's even spookier than like demons and and like ghosts and monsters and shit is like real home invasion type shit yeah that's fucking terrifying and uh uh this 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 mo- this movie's like a slow boil it's just like fucking constantly like Shit's getting raised higher and higher and higher, and then it it all explodes at the end. Like at the end, I don't know. That's where it kind of loses me. But we'll get to that. Well, you could tell right away that like he's tracked them down. He's kept his eyes on them. Yeah, and yeah, he knows now, everything. Yeah, because when they reveal that he paid for their ice cream and he's just sitting there. Yeah, I was like, oh fuck, that's fuck. that's a, that's a scary fellow. Yeah, that's scary as fuck. And then the car not like the car just being gone is sick. Realistic? No. No, not at all. But, but it's fucking sick. <laughs> yeah. Um I my second note is Lee Heller. I barely know her. Very, very, very good. Thank you. Um yeah, the the um 
shit, I forgot. Sick. Yeah. You know what I'm not used to? What's that? I'm not used to a youngish looking Nick Nolte. Yeah, like in my mind, he's always been an old man. Yeah. And just yeah. seeing him here, I'm like, oh, he looks really good here. Yeah. I also think him and Jessica Lang are a very believable couple. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. The I like how before any shit really goes down, they seem like a good, like nice, fun, regular family. Yeah. And then like as soon as like I don't, he tips the scale like I mean, yeah, he kills their dog actually. It's a big thing. Yeah. So like but immediately they fall apart. And then like it gets into why they fell they fall apart and it's cuz they have a troubled history. Right. I mean, or like with you can tell and shit. Right. Juliet Lewis is unhappy from the beginning of the movie and at first it just seems like she's an angsty teen. Right. And then it gets further and further into why she's genuinely unhappy because we see Nick Nolte trying to fuck some woman. Right. You know, uh, this woman, Lori, and or it's just not going well because she says, is marriage synonymous with deception? And then we find out er later that he has been a serial cheater. Yes. Infidelity. Very good. Very, yeah. very good. <laughs> I know words. So, like, yeah, that that is good. And Jessica Lang shines in that scene where he's on the phone with her. Yes. And, uh, yeah, she's just fucking, she's like, you're a real son of a bitch. You know that? We moved all the way out here so you could get away from it, and you fucking found it, you dickhead. And, like, right. I like. And then he really spin. Yeah. I, I liked that he's not a good guy. Like in that in that sense. Right. He's a real fucking scumbag because he's really yeah. spinning a yarn on her. Yeah, he fucking gas lamps her, as you say. Very good. Yeah, what are they in <laughs> San Diego? The way he's gas lamping her? Nice. What is this fucking 19th century London? <laughs> Sick. Because they, they got gas lamps. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. Thanks, man. <laughs> Uh, but uh, yeah, that I, that that's that stuff's great, and uh, I like that. I I also read that um, Scorsese was like uh, he kept turning this down because he, the family was written to be like all hunky dory and great, and he was like, "Nah, I want a miserable family," so he made them miserable. I, I like cool. that a lot. Yeah, I really liked it, and I really like that Jessica Lang really sticks up for herself here. She doesn't take his shit. Yeah, because he does. He spins this yarn and he's like, he's like, we have to work as a team. And then he's yeah. sleeping on the couch. He's in the doghouse. Yeah. And she's like, because you could tell right after this movie, they're getting a divorce. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, Julia Lewis as the, the narrator, she kind of like bookends it as a narrator. Yeah. And she's like, she just says, oh, yeah, we never talked about it again. At least not with each other. So, like, we don't know if they got divorced. That's true. That's true. I would have just imagined that they would. I would also assume. Yeah. Like, once we get through this, we're fucking done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this movie really has a great supporting cast, too, because we got former presidential candidate Fred Thompson as Nolte's boss. Really? Yeah. Huh. I mean, he was also an actor, but he also ran for president. Right. <laughs> Of course, the great Gregory Peck shows up as the lawyer. Yep. He was in the original, I believe. Yes. And he, that dude, even at this age, is really controlling the scene here. Yeah. Dude but just I'm had a presence. Just barred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, this clearly either fake or dyed mustache. Yeah. This was his last. Uh role in a movie yeah i believe yeah and he i mean he retired i love it yeah actors yeah. used to retire some of them still do thank you gene hackman yeah although have you seen a picture of him lately he's 92 the fact that 92. he's out yeah damn the fact that he's out and about getting coffee i don't care yeah he's thin who cares yeah i, I mean... think he looks awesome <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, is Dick, Ra- Dick Van Dyke retired? Uh, I think he, no, he still appears in things. Yeah. He was in a car accident recently. Really? Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. Good. I like Dick Van Dyke. I think everybody does. Yeah, who doesn't? I was about to say. <laughs> I was gonna. I had no idea. I love when Nulty and Lang are More like talking. penis van lesbian. Very, very good. That is for the <laughs> record books, Andy. I'm gonna submit this to Congress. <laughs> See how quick I was? How I interrupted? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you were really quick on that one. <laughs> oh shit! I loved how Nulty and Lang. When they're talking about marijuana, they have pretty lax views on weed for 1991. But then it yeah. felt like the studio made them say something. Uh, it's not like necrophilia or bestiality. Yeah. It was like, is that really what we're going to compare who, it to? Who the fuck said it was? Like, it'd be one thing. Be like, it's not like cocaine or heroin. Fine. Right. I, yeah, but necrophilia and bestiality. My word. Yeah, that's that's fucking heinous yeah that's the jeferis power hour <laughs> robbie you son of a bitch <laughs> uh, some uh, army hammer shit yeah i'm sorry arm and hammer so you can help clean it up afterwards there you go what I meant honestly to say. honestly though who the fuck names a kid army when their last name is hammer who names a kid army it's a dumb name and i'm glad that he's done Okay, man. Also because okay. of the ca- the cannibalism. That's yeah. that's weird. That's weird. Yeah, well, also his birth name is military. That's funny. That's good <laughs> stuff. I assume that his first name was just Arm. And then people called him Army. You know? I have no idea. Maybe he was born just an arm. That's very possible. And the doctor was like, the rest will grow in eventually. Maybe his name is Armand or something like that. Like, he, you know, that's a pretty, pretty common yeah, name, Armand. Yeah, that's true. Arm. And he just didn't want to be Arm and Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> we're I not. I like how we're talking about this, and we're not googling him. We're not gonna look nah, it up. We're just gonna like, speculate on his name. Who cares? Fuck uh, him. Yeah. Who fucking cares? He's a weird guy. Yeah. All right. What makes this movie so great to me is so we know we learned that Nulty's like kind of a piece of shit husband or whatever. Yeah. But I love that it opens up this ethical question of if you're a lawyer and a public defender and De Niro is a monster, are you doing the right thing by doing your duty and defending him? And so the fact that he withholds this evidence and then later on is excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And like he does the wrong thing as his lawyer, but he does the right thing as like a decent human being. Right. You know, and yeah, I mean, I think that, like you said, that does raise an ethical question because like, you know, lawyers, like sometimes you're defending a fucking monster and it's like, do I let this guy go free? But no? in theory, a public defender, which he was, he he used to be and is no right. longer in That's this movie, true. a public defender in theory is a good lawyer. Right. You know, you have to be there for the public. You are a public defender defending this guy. And in a way, yes, you did the right thing, but it's also good that you are no longer a public defender because where do, who decides when you are the moral police? Right. Hmm. So I just think I thought that was really, really interesting. I agree. I agree. Um I also like how they do a pretty good job of showing that with the family, they don't really listen to uh, the daughter, uh, Juliet Lewis, uh, Danny, right? I didn't really write down a lot of the names of the characters. But yeah, because she's always like popping in at the end of scenes. and They're like, not now. And she's like, oh, okay. And then yeah. like when De Niro's character like gives her attention and it's in like the prime of her fucking sexual awakening as a teenager. And he's like telling her all this shit she wants to hear and all he's like, hey, your parent he's like pushing her away from her parents. He's saying, like, hey, uh, they don't trust you. That they, they they're gonna scold you. They're gonna like they don't like you. Come come with me. And she's like, Oh, uh, okay. And then he fucking smooches her. 
And it's like, oh, that whole scene was fucking oh, so brrr, uncomfortable, man. Yes, but also I... so well acted by yeah. both of them. And I can see why they would both get nominated for this movie. Yeah. Well, you could see he's done his research on this family. He knows they're having problems. Yeah. And he knows she's unhappy, so he's just going for it. Yeah. And it's terrifying. Yes, it is, truly. And, like, when she figures out, she's like, wait, you're not a teacher. And he's like, uh, what, what are you going to do about it? And she's like, uh, I don't know. And he's like, well, let me tell you what I'm going to do. And, like, it's just, ugh, yeah, yeah. Yucky makes me yeah. makes me go because he, he plays like the good guy or like the victim to her because he has the line like every man has to go through hell to reach his paradise. Yeah. And they're like bonding over literature and stuff. Yeah. Uh, Ooh, uh, yucky, 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 yucky. I hate it. Uh, he also at one point hangs upside down like like by Michael Keaton's Batman. Do you think? No. Go, 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 go. <laughs> nice nice it doesn't work it just didn't work no it's just yeah it's cool though um the other scene that i really liked was when like nick nolte goes up to him in the diner he's like hey if you don't back off some bad might happen and little little did he know he was recording him uh that's the thing. He's a pedophile. He's a, a terrible man, but he's very cunning. Yeah. Like super smart. Well, again, he spent 14 years learning how to read. He spent 14 years learning the law. Yeah. And he even says at the end, he's like, I spent 14 years and I became more than a man. Yeah. It's like, I became a, a Batman. Go, 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 go. <laughs> yep, it's a callback. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's truly uh terrifying, petrifying shit. Yes, I would I was petrified. I was froze. I was like <laughs> I couldn't move. It was it was Very horrifying. Good. Very good. Yeah. Uh, uh I love the three dudes go to beat the shed the Nero, and he's just like, nah. Yeah, he like takes it at first and he's like, okay, my turn. Yeah. Then his monologue is fucking great. Yes. Yes. He's like, I am God and God is me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write down any of that. I was just like, this is amazing. I fucking yeah. loved it. Yeah. No, it's uh again, terrifying shit. Yeah. It's like not only is he outsmarting me at every turn. But he is also way more physically dominant than oh, I'll yeah. ever be. I'm fucking, I'm a pencil pusher over you, you know? Right. Be, me I, being Nick Nolte, obviously. And when you see that De Niro is able to just take all this, or Max Cady is able to take all this punishment, at one point he mentions the abuse he took in prison. Yeah, he does. And it starts to make sense. Like he went through that. He's going to be able to just withstand pretty much all of this. Right. Like it does not matter. Oh, what do you think of the PI that Nick Nolte hires? Uh, I think that guy's an idiot. (laughs) I love that. He was just a bumbling fool. Yeah. And like, He'd call afterwards and be like, oh, I got to tell you, those three guys, I thought they'd, be, they'd do it, but uh, it turns out they didn't. That's all right. I'll get two, uh, three other guys. It's cool. And Nick Nolte's like, no, you fucking dunce. My family. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love De Niro just like makes him in the diner. Uh, guys bought your uh, breakfast. He's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah. And then he just like threatens him. Like my guy. He also has like a, I don't know who the actor is. He's got like a permanent dumb guy face. Yeah. Like all the time. Um, I also thought it was absolutely hysterical when he died because uh, he's like, long night, huh? And then he's <laughs> De Niro's in the dress and he's like, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was such an awesome death, though. De yeah. Niro just disguised as the housekeeper. Also, did you see what he was drinking, the P.I. at that point? Yeah, he kept mixing Pepto-Bismol and like Jack Daniels. Oh, right? what are you doing? My guy, go to a doctor. <laughs> my, my, ugh. and then 
Nulty slipping and falling in the PI's blood is hilarious. Yes. And also like and everybody again to speak to their great acting in this movie, everybody has a good react. They're all like, oh my God. He slips <laughs> yeah. and falls and they like try to help him up and like and that's what he, uh the she Benny Hill music starts playing. Yes. Well, I liked how um uh the daughter found finds uh sexist the the book under the yeah. the thing and i also like how they you've been accused of being a sexist no no i i uh i've been accused of running the census i go door to door <laughs> okay <Yeah. laughs> so you've been helping with the gerrymandering yes yeah oh, okay all right yeah. cool just want to make sure yeah uh what was i gonna say oh yeah the i like how even the very first like real offense that he does to the family like he kills the dog right right and then they say, like, okay, well, was he in the house? And he's like, no. Like, well, then how did he poison the dog? And he's like, I don't know. I just know he wasn't in the house. But right there, he's been in the house. Yeah. He's been in the house the whole fucking time. Because, like, the piano wire is missing from that one key. And that's what he uses to kill, uh, what's her name and what's his face? Uh, that's it. No, what's his name and what's her face? Yeah, that's, like, what they're credited as. Yeah. And that is spooky as fuck. He's been in the house the whole fucking time. Yeah. He's horrifying. Uh, That's what I have to say. It's legitimately scary because it's believable. It's realistic. Yes. And that's why the third act kind of loses me. Because like this whole movie is pretty grounded. And then... This man uh, strapped himself to the bottom of their car for like more than a few states, right? Like, I have no idea how long I drove. I genuinely don't. I that didn't bother me at all. I did not care. Okay, and like, if that was it, fine. That's fine. I didn't like all the boat stuff. Ooh, see, I really liked it. I liked it at first, but I think it just it devolves into like a slasher movie. Okay. Where like he just keeps coming back. And that's cool. But the way it's edited is very jarring. And it's really hard to tell. Like whenever there's any action going on, it's really hard to tell what the fuck is going on, who's where. Okay. I can I I can understand. I think it's supposed to be in that like that in a way because it's supposed to show the storm and just the chaos that's happening. But sure. your critique is fair. Yeah, and I don't know. I just it just keeps going, and at at a certain point, I'm just like, I don't, I don't really care. Also, like it ends, and and that's it. She's just like, yeah, we never really talked about it, and I guess that goes to say like they continued to not communicate as a family because that was that's really their problem. I would like I would have liked to see that they all beat him with like communication like they learn something at the end but they don't in this movie it's just like again like I've been saying all scores timber it's like Scorsese just does like oh look at this crazy shit and that's uh, that's really see it. I disagree see I think here is it's supposed to be just be a horror movie or a scary movie like a thriller right so I don't think there's supposed to be really a lesson here. I think you're not even supposed to think about that. It's just, you know, I think if she doesn't say anything, you're probably going, all right. Like, you don't even think about that. Yeah. But I think it's just to show you that, like, this family, that cycle is not going to stop because they've been through shit before and they're just going to continue to be- go through shit. Yeah. Like, also, you guys should definitely... All three of you should go to therapy. For- yes. That- mean, what Are you out of your mind? You were hunted for like a year. When De Niro was on the bottom of the car, all I kept thinking of was, all right, kids, who wants to drive through the cactus patch? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I liked how he got he got out from under the car. And like that lady just sees him and she just looks at him and he just looks at her like. He's like, chill, man, chill. I'll kill you. And she knows it. She's like, this guy will kill me. Oh, yeah. She ain't no dummy. Yeah. All right. On the boat, 
when he's lighting that cigar and Juliette Lewis just pulls out the lighter fluid and sprays on him, that's awesome. That's great stuff. Yeah. Great, great stuff. I thought he was dead there. And when he comes back, I was like, all right, it's still pretty cool. But that was so sick when she just burns him. Yeah. Yeah. And it's awesome that they brought the cigars into it. Yeah. Because they didn't have to do that. If they never, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, the fact that they brought what something that he clearly enjoys and it made him just be burnt to a crisp, because the rest of the time he's on screen, you see the burns. Right. And, like, you see throughout the entire movie, he's pretty much 100% in control. Like, even when he gets jumped by the three hitmen, he uses that to his advantage and, like, sues uh, Nick Nolte and, like, gets him fucking disbarred. Yeah. Like, ruins his career. He's ruining every aspect of his life. Like, one by one. So, like, even then, he's in control. And it's when he finally gets the family where he wants them to, like, complete his master plan where he just, like, violates his family in front of him. That's where he kind of lets his guard down. And he lights the cigarette, uh, the cigar. And that's when Julius, Juliet Lewis fucking burns the shit out of him. Right. Great stuff. Loved it. Um. Also, horrifying shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. real Genuinely. scary. <laughs> yeah, genuinely terrifying. What'd you think of De Niro flirting with Lori? Because when she tells him a joke and he just starts laughing, and then she says the punchline, and he goes, well, "That's even funnier." Yeah. Um, Lori's the the racquetball girl. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that was um, uh, that was scary too because he's like he's coming off as a, like a, a charming regular guy there. Yeah, and that's fucking again terrifying. Yeah, and then he bites off a chunk of her face. He sure is. Real quick, thank you so much for listening. If you want to send us some feedback, send us an email at roydsreview at gmail dot com. That's r o y d s r e v u e at gmail dot com. You could also find our music on Spotify, iTunes, wherever you get your music by searching The Roids. That's R-O-Y-D-S. We have two albums and a Christmas song. Hope you like it. On a serious note. Okay. Uh, I think this movie does make a great statement regarding how victims of uh, assault are treated. I agree. Because throughout the movie, she constantly says that, you know, even Lori here says, like, I, I don't want to report it because I know how people are going to talk to me. Right. They're going to talk to me. They're going to talk about me. And like, I'm just going to be held up. Uh, this is going to be a part of my life for forever. Like, let right. me just move on. And also, fuck you. Because you were supposed to meet me there. Yeah. But... Then even earlier, they make no bones about it that De Niro treated his original victim very poorly because he's like, yeah, I withheld that she was promiscuous, but like you should have seen what he did to the girl. Right. And that's another thing, like promiscuity shouldn't, it shouldn't be like, ah, they weren't sexually assaulted. They get around. Yeah. God will judge you for the promiscuity. <laughs> But like I like how he he makes like a righteous stand in that moment, uh, you know, off screen years ago, because now he's a piece of shit. <laughs> so like as a as a younger man, he was a he was a better man, I guess. Well, listen, people cheat. I, mean, I don't think that makes right. him a like, bad guy. Well, like infidelity versus sexual assault. Like, you know, so let's let's all agree a sexual assault is way worse. Oh, absolutely. Way, yeah. way worse. That's why it's like, yeah, he's a complicated character, which is something you don't really see in movies that much yeah. anymore. He's just like not a great husband and clearly not a great dad. Because like to jump back to where De Niro seduces the daughter mm -hmm. afterwards, Nick Nolte's talking to Juliet Lewis. He's like, what did, did he touch you? Like, did he say it? And she was like smiling. He's like, don't smile. What like what happened? And then she's smiling again. And then he like attacks her. Yeah, he puts his hand over her mouth and she's like, don't fucking smile. In a way, that's proving De Niro correct. Like if you would just sit down and talk to her. 
like and tell like, hey, this guy is just going to tell you a whole bunch of stuff that you want to hear. He's manipulating you. Mm-hmm. But instead, he's he's too he's just like, don't do that. Don't don't do that. It's like with the marijuana, like like even like De Niro said. So like in that instance, Nick Nolte is proving him right. I mean, I don't know. I feel like a parent can tell the 15 year old they're not allowed to smoke weed. Sure. But that's like, just my personal opinion, Andy. If you're out there giving 15 year olds weed, I mean, that's you. Listen, I make money. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> but like, it's, it's just, uh, again, the lack of communication in that family. Right. And uh, how he's preying on them because he knows who they are and how they speak to each other and their past. It's very good. This is a very good movie. I agree. I agree. You know, what's a really cool shot. What's that? When De Niro is sitting on the wall and the fireworks are behind him. I think that looked really cool. It did. You know, that's, uh, that's a VFX shot. Yeah. Wasn't it? I thought it, I just figured it was, um, Blue what's screen. it called? Oh, it was blue screen. I thought it was what's the other one called? Not blue screen. It was what they did before green screen or blue screen. Um, backlighting. Is that what it's called? Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a film boy, so I don't really know. Me neither. I just uh, <laughs> when I was doing my trivia, I seen t- um that it's the first use, one of the first uses of blue screen that uh, Marty Scorsese did. Yeah, I thought it looked really cool. It did. It looked really, I agree. really good. Uh. Nolte asks if his daughter can't, you know, he, she can't miss two weeks of summer school. Dude, summer school is like five weeks long. Yeah. You can't miss two weeks. You ever been to summer school? Twice. I did. I did once. And one, uh, the one time they were like, you cannot miss one day. And like people raise their hand. They're like, uh, nope, nope. Let me explain. Funerals. Still no. Family emergencies, still no. If you miss one day, you fail. That, that was my experience. Yeah, that was my experience, though. No, that was not my experience. I mean, it wasn't that strict. It was like, listen, you get like one absence. Yeah, I, I saw one kid. He he missed the day. They killed him. <laughs> they took yeah. him behind the gym and yeah. put two in the back of his head. Two in the back of his head and one my... in the head of his penis. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Oof. Oof. All right. Uh, I pray they did the two in the back of the head first. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Uh, Jessica Lang seems to be turned on by the threat of violence or the idea of violence at one point. When is that? Uh, they're like talking at one point and she just like starts like smiling and shit. She's like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I did like how she was very quick to uh, just like slap the shit out of Nick Nolte. Yeah. Like even even when when he he's like so spooked that w- he can't sleep and like where uh, that great shot where he like he opens his eyes and like everything's in like photo negative mm-hmm. and he sees uh Katie right there and then he like rubs his eyes and it goes back to normal and he's not there and then he wakes up Jessica Lang and Jessica Lang's <laughs> before she even opens her eyes she's just like <laughs> like <laughs> <it was> fucking <laughs> great loved it. Because she's just like, at this point, she's like, I fucking hate you. Yeah, she's done. She's over it. Yeah. When De Niro speaks to Jessica Lange for the first time at the house, and then Juliette Lewis comes out, and he just speeds off. He's definitely going to jerk off, right? Uh, Probably, yeah. Yeah, he's going to crank that slog. Slog. (laughs) That was also, um, uh, you know, what I read was Jessica Lang, her character wasn't supposed to meet him until the boat. And she was like, I think they should meet before. So they put that scene in and that's a good scene. Uh, I liked how she, again, she was like not really taking any shit from him. And then as soon as the daughter comes out, she's like, get back. <laughs> you don't get a scene with, Oh wait, they've already had a scene. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> You've had your scene. I don't know if that was before or after. I don't. I genuinely don't know. Uh, the moron at the airline falls for De Niro's trick. Yes, she's like, "All right." Yeah, and because he, he's he's such a good manipulator, he's just like, "Ah, look at me, I'm all banked up." You know, uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah. That's that was my uh, impression of De Niro, but from The Irishman. That's very good. Very yeah. very good. 
That was all he did in the in the Irish. <laughs> I uh, 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 I gotta tell you, I don't, uh, I don't know. <laughs> he was great in that though. Yeah, check out that episode. There's a lot of weird Southern pride in this movie. Yeah, like Confederate like stickers. Pride. Yeah, yeah, it's all over. And uh, I forget who says it at the end. I think no, it's the uh, the PI. I forget what he says. He said some crazy Southern shit. Yeah, and it was like, all right, relax. Oh, yeah, I was like, all right, guys, this doesn't the, need to be part of the movie. You're also the dumbest guy in this movie. <laughs> well, it makes sense then. Yeah. <laughs> You know what was great in this movie? De Niro's What's outfits. That? Yeah. Dude had some cool clothes. Well, he would be your idol, wouldn't he, Robbie? Yeah. As an actor, he's a great actor. No, as a character. Who, Max Cady? Max, Max Cady, yeah. Yeah, sure. Robbie's top top, uh, top influences, Max Cady and Travis Bickle. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Wouldn't that just mean I would kill myself? Um, I don't know. Travis Pickle didn't really kill himself. Yeah, but he killed a guy who was a pedophile. Yeah, but he, I feel like his intentions were pretty clear. Travis with, Pickle uh, would kill Max Cady. Yeah, that's true. I feel like Max Cady would, would kill Travis Pickle, though. They would definitely fight. I feel like. I don't know. I feel Inside like Inside you Katie are two is... wolves. One is Max Cady, one is <laughs> Travis Pickle. I feel like Max Cady would definitely get the upper hand. He just seems like a more formidable. I have no idea. I don't really care. Don't this know. seems like this know. seems like a really incel argument to have, actually. Well, it's perfect for us. Well, that's true. That's true. I think the editing and everything is like really, really well done for the first two thirds of this movie. And again, like the action is real janky to me and just kind of, I thought it just kind of petered out at the end, even though it's like all action. It's just like, I don't know. I don't know. I was like, all right, I get it. Then they're going to kill him. (laughs) Just just do it already. Good movie up until the, the last part. I also really I love De Niro's death when he just starts speaking in tongues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then he That's, drowns. Uh, then he's dead. Presumably. Good movie. Good movie. Sorry? Yeah. He he drowns presumably. Yeah, that's what I just that's what I I don't know if he's dead or not. Uh sure. No. Shortle Bortle. Shortle Bortle. Yep. Also, what are you doing cheating on Jessica Lang? I don't know, man. He seemed like a sex addict. All right. I don't know. I what don't I'm know. saying is Jessica Lange's a beautiful lady. Oh, great, great. Now you're a misogynist. Great, awesome. I feel like I, I feel like I use the right terms. You know, beautiful lady is that? But you know, just judging a woman by her looks, Andy, is that all you care about? She's That's also horrible. a great actress. Horrible. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't really right, know anything Lizzo. else about her. I don't know anything else about her, Robbie. That's fair. That's fair. I really like this, though. I have nothing else to say. Me neither. I thought this was uh, very good, especially. Oh, I didn't understand the ending with the eyes. I didn't get that. What do you mean? At the, the end, eyes. they just flash some eyes on the screen, like at the end, the very end. I think it's just because they, they started the movie with that. I think oh. it's just a little bookend. I didn't get it. I don't know. I'm stupid, I guess. You and me both, brethren. Got any questions? Um, I was gonna go to Letterbox first. You want to do questions first? Oh yeah, do do Letterbox. I always forget. Yeah, I do too. That's why, like, I remember. I go, let's do some letter bixed. Uh, how do I? Let me do a. Uh, okay, I would give this four stars. If I'm being honest. I agree. I agree. Four stars is good. Oh, that was so easy. The Roy's review official review for Cape Fear is four stars. Amazing. If this movie landed on its feet. Meaning they didn't kind of like shit on the ending, in my yeah. opinion. This would be uh maybe five stars. I don't know. Okay. Really good. Really, really good. I have three questions. I have one. All right, I'll go first. Okay. Questions. What was it like seeing De Niro play you in a movie, Andy? Very good. 
Very good. I put all that behind <laughs> me, Robbie. <laughs> I'm, I made it out of the river. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and I got plastic surgery to fix the burns. <laughs> oh, you fooled me. My, yeah, it took skin from my ass. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Because you look like a butt face. <laughs> In typical fashion, Robbie makes fun of burn victims. Yeah, well, you, you just got burned there. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm roasting and toasting you. Oh, man. He's roasting and toasting, everybody. Oh, All right. Man. Um, Questions. Why is she applying lipstick after coitus, but before going to bed? Um, That her being... uh. Jessica Lang, after they have uh, Nick Nolte and her have sex. Thank you for clarifying. Um, I don't know. Maybe she's also cheating and like she doesn't get hers really from him. Like he's quick or something. So she just like sneaks off in the night. Maybe. Questions. Why did Lang need to open all the curtains to see De Niro? It's a good question. Like she just kept going. It was like, you didn't see, you saw him the first time. He's there. Yeah. <laughs> Questions. Do you think Max Cady had a real list of names of students? Or do you think he just had a random list of names that he just wrote down? Uh, it's probably, probably the second thing. Cause like, I don't think he'd need that. How would she know? You know? Yeah. It would just be even more terrifying. Yes, it would. That's true. Real spook fest on this. Boy, am I spooked out of my fucking uh, Capri's Catober. I'm so scared I come down the skirt. (laughs) Catober. I have trivia. There's there's a lot to unload there. Why did you come? (laughs) Why are you wearing a skirt? (laughs) And why? That's not, that's pretty much it. And why do I have trivia? Yeah. Because I have six trivia. Wow, I have five, maybe? No, I also have six. Oh, my word. Wow. You want to go first or second? I'll go first. Go for it. Which two comic book characters were on the wall of his cell? Is it Black Bolt, Captain Marvel, The Punisher, or Mr. Miracle? I'm going to say one is the Punisher. Incorrect. Okay, Black Bolt? Yes. All right, so Black Bolt and what are the other two? Captain Marvel? Captain Marvel and Mr. Miracle. I'm going to say Black Bolt and Mr. Miracle. No, Mr. Miracle is DC. Oh, I didn't didn't know that. Did you say Marvel characters or comic book characters? Well, if they're together. Oh, I thought they were two separate like posters. No, no, it's just Uh, the two characters. They're running together. Well... I goofed. It's all right. Um, Captain Marvel and Black Bolt. Okay. It's, the, it's Captain Marvel. It's the the, the 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 space guy. Very good. Yeah. What part of De Niro's lighter blinks in the movie theater? The crotch, the head, the nipples, the eyes. The nipples. It is the nipples. Yeah. I remember because I cummed. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> All right, what is the name of the boat that gets absolutely decimated? Is it the Seafarer, the Breezy Baby, the Siren, or Moana? Well, let me ask you a question first. What's the name of Nick Nolte's boat? Ariel, Aurora, Jasmine, or Moana? I'm going to go with the Breezy Baby. That's Moana. Ah, it's Moana. Yeah, Moanis. Nice. The Moanis Canal. <laughs> I think it's actually Mona. Steven Spielberg was originally going to direct this, but traded with Scorsese to direct which movie? Is it Jurassic Park, Schindler's List, Hook, or An American Tale, Fifel Goes West? Hook. It is not Hook. So originally Scorsese was going to direct this, uh, this movie, 
Jurassic Park. The answer this the trivia. No, it is not Jurassic Park. So you have Schindler's List and American Tale Fifel Goes West. American Tale Fifel Goes West. No, it was Schindler's List. That's mortifying. That would have been a horrible, horrible choice. Yeah, and Scorsese had this had uh, Schindler's List, and um, Spielberg had Cape Fear, and they were just like, we should probably switch, right? So they switched. Yeah, that makes sense. That's why this is under uh, Amblin, which is Spielberg's production company. Oh, I had no idea. Yeah. Max Cady goes to jail in 1977. What month did he go to jail? July, August, September, October. July. It is July. Hey, look at me. Um... Who did Robert De Niro call to try and convince them to play Sam Bowen, Nick Nolte's role? Did he call Jeff Bridges, Harrison Ford, Ed Harris, or Nick Nolte himself? Nick Nolte himself. Incorrect. Harrison Ford. Yes. Yeah. That would have been cool. Yeah. I feel like he would have he would have done pretty well in this. Probably. What subject does De Niro tell Juliet Lewis he teaches? This should be easy. Do you want me to give you a few options? Drama. It is drama. Yeah. Drama. Drama. <laughs> Did Mike pick any of that up? Nope. <laughs> I squealed like a fucking pig for no reason. Yep. <laughs> How's your throat I feeling? I said, not great after that. <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> I said, drama, I barely know her. I knew what you said. Oh, okay. I knew where it was going because I heard drama. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah, everyone no put me. it together. I think when people are driving or at work, they all of that went, I barely know her. <laughs> they all said it. It's even better. <laughs> I figured they just wrapped their car around a fucking tree like this fucking guy again. <laughs> I'd rather die. All right. Which note on the piano is not working because your boy pulled the wire out? Is it a C, D, A, or F? Is it a D? It is not a D. Is it an F? It is not an F. Is it an A? It is an A. Ah, third time's the charm, baby. Yeah. It's like a USB. Yep. <laughs> when De Niro offers Lewis a joint, he sings a song to her. Which artist does he sing? Frank Sinatra? Donovan, Tommy James and the Shondells, Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. Damn. The third one. Yes! He sings Hell I yeah. Think We're Alone Now by Tommy James and the Shondells. Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> All right. What year did the original Cape Fear come out? 1959, 1962, 1964, 1967. 1962. Correct. That is correct. Very good. Very, very good. <laughs> hey, what does De Niro say he could teach if he were in California? Earthquake preparedness, drama, religious studies, philosophy. Earthquake preparedness. Yeah, I think you got yeah. every one of my questions right. Hell yeah, brother. Yeah, okay, well, I guess I'm just not good enough. Okay, here he goes. I guess I'm just not oh, i'm not i guess i'll never be good enough for anyone ever oh, again oh my goodness but you know what i did do after i watched this movie let me let me guess let me guess okay go ahead guess you stalked a family uh let's not talk about that um okay do you know what else i did <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, uh i actually don't want to know now did you write a song i wrote a song i wrote a song my guy yo same I wrote a song, my guy, when I do my brage. Yo, same. I'm stalling because it's, it's it's downloading on the iCloud, and it's taking a minute. So both our songs are right now. iCloud? I barely know her. Very good. Thanks. Very, very you didn't good. didn't see that, that one was coming. Very good. You, I didn't, actually, because yeah. I didn't. I don't know why you would even say it. Yeah, it was so well, heinous. Speaking of heinous, here's my anus. Showing Rob my butt. <laughs> yes, you are. Yep, you are. You should wipe better. Nah, dude, that's a myth. Okay, okay. You know what? 
Do I have anything to flip so we can get this a rolling now? I do have something I can flip. Flip that shit then, Robbie. One day I'll bring a pick with me back in here. I don't have a pick to flip. But here's a thing to flip. Do you want heads or tails? I want heads. It's heads. You want to go first or second? I am the greatest man of all time. I'll go... I don't know what uh, that means. I don't know. Uh, I'll go first because I got kind of a, a spook a spook fest song. Oh, excuse a spook me. fest song? Yeah, I went with a real spooky kind of vibe because, uh, well, number one, my throat was... Uh, you know, kind of, kind of lame. So I, I, I did like a deeper kind of thing, which turns out is uh, not easy. Singing <laughs> deep is not easy. But uh, yeah, it's um, my song is called "14 Years," and it's uh, it's about perfect. the age of the girls you date. Robbie, you are a scoundrel. Yep, I am. I'm a wascally wabbit. All right. Uh, my name. Uh, my name is Andy, and the song I wrote is 14 Years." Fourteen years. I spent fourteen years with the love, with stuff the love. I became more than a man Your job so mighty So secure, so easy Your house so inviting So secure, so unearthly That's my song. It's called 14 Years, parentheses, Spook Daddy. <laughs> I think that a lot. I really like the vibe of that. You're right. It's very, very mysterious. Ooh. Imagine imagine it being played in Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm not going to do the voice, but I've been, I've been playing it a lot and just like sitting here and like, you know, when you're like doing a miss or like when you're hiding out, you ever do um, when you're playing it and you're approaching another gang's hideout? Yeah. And the music gets like really intense and there's like an acoustic guitar. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah. We're going to become Mago. We're going to go to Tahiti. We're going to become Mago. Oh, yeah. You know, You're I just, right, boy. You have to. You have to. You, know. you got to do it. Yeah. Tell us about your song, Robbie. 
All right. Uh, it sounds nothing like that. Okay. I did my song from the perspective of Max Cady, just like you did. Okay. Um, but in this, he's really talking to Nick Nolte's character. My song is called Remember Your Oath. Okay. It's pretty easy to sing from his perspective, isn't it? Bobby? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty easy. I mean, he's the main character of the movie, so mm. it does mm. make it pretty easy. Um, you also see eye to eye with him, right? Who, Nick Nolte? No, Robbie. <laughs> Max Katie. Oh, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Certain things. Okay. Okay. Like lawyers took an oath. I believe in that. And they should remember their oath. And this is the song I wrote. It's called Remember Your Oath. Very good. That was my song called Remember Your Oath. I like it. Thank Rock you. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yeah, I um, I, I did something I haven't done before, and I really tried to focus on doing a harmony throughout the song. Yeah, it was good. I like that. Thank you. Um, I went for some pretty high notes there, and I'm, I think they came out all right. I agree. But yeah, we're really kind of focusing on Max Katie and his just problems, justified or not, with Nick Nolte. Yeah, uh, I, I also caught the line uh, about the rake. Yeah. <laughs> very good. <laughs> I also kept waiting for him to sing an opera, so I, I was very confused. <laughs> yeah, I had a good time with that. Uh, what would you think of the three-part harmony there on? Did you notice that? Did that come through? Uh, yeah, I mean, I heard the song, so I definitely caught it. Uh, I didn't pick up on a three. Which, which part did you have a three-part harmony? On the speak in tongues line. The three-part oh. I don't know if you caught that. I don't know. I was proud of it, so I wanted to point it out. Yeah, no, I'll listen, I'll listen to it again. That's part of the reason we do Oh, you want me to play it again? Sure, no problem. All right, guys. All right. Here's Here my song again. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to make it dark, so I did it in D minor. Same. Yeah, because I also have a minor D. <laughs> oh, 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 boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, I also did uh, mine and drop diggity D. I forgot to say that because I know that you love when I say that. I do. I'm getting into yeah. it now. Yeah. I'm a little pain pig. Oink, oink, oink. I'm a pain 
It can make me squeal, Landy. I don't like this anymore. He can't. He's done. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm all right. I'm okay. No one's listening anymore. Yeah. They are out after that one. I'm a little pain pig. Make me squeal. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> well, what do we got going on next week, Robbie? On. Boy, am I about to shit my pants from fear, Kotober. Very good. We're doing Scream 2. Hey, and where Mark Ponty is going to be joining us again. Noish. Yeah, we did Scream 1 last. Uh, I'm spooked out of my George Skatober. Check that one out. Yeah, and then we got, and that was two bangers. So look for potentially three bangers on this next one. Wow. Bangers and slangers. Bangers and slangers. Bangers and mash. Huh. That's a huh. different thing entirely. It is. That's cool. Yeah. yeah so it's just me... word association. That's half the podcast. That's more than half the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a solid 80%. Yeah. All right. Well, this is where you can find our music. You go to Spotify. You go to Apple Music. You go to Deezer. And you type oh. in the roids. And you, <laughs> you could. It's just the way you said Deezer. Oh, okay. Um. You type in the Roids. We got two albums and a Christmas song. And then you go to ban- uh, theroids.bandcamp.com and you check out all these podcast songs we got. This is episode 70 something. 75. 75. That's 1,000 songs. That's 150 songs. 150. Huh. That was close. Close. Very close. Yeah. Um, Either way, it's a lot of songs. Um, check that out. Um, again, the roids.bandcamp.com. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube and all that. Uh, yes. Robbie, take take the take the socials. Will do. Instagram, X, Threads, TikTok, YouTube, the Roids Band. Wow. And send us an email at roidsreview at gmail.com. Yeah. Um, also, leave well, a five star review everywhere. Uh, you know, tell your friends. Word of yeah. mouth. Very good. Yeah. But yeah, send us an email. You can request an episode. Let us know oh, what you course. think about us. Yeah, request a movie for us to review and write songs about. And request this. Andy does cock ratings. Yep. <laughs> But ever, a, but you don't understand. He's not rating how it looks. He's rating a picture. So it's gonna be XXX, XXX. It's like these are all yeah. X-rated photos. These are yeah. These you should not. These are not safe for work. Yeah. On account of them being a penis. Yes. No, I said cock. They're chicken pictures. Oh well, that's safe for work then. Yeah. But the chickens flash you his little cock. Yeah, his little chicken dick. <laughs> yeah. His dickin. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, word of mouse, but also word of Klaus. It's a German Very friend. Very good. Hello! <laughs> the word of the day is papers. <laughs> I was like, right. could you tell us I didn't know if I should say it or not as I said no. it? <laughs> no, I didn't. I, I'm honestly lost on whatever you just fucking said. Here's my perfect German. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Well, next week is Scream 2. Check that shit out. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Bye, Klaus. <laughs>